Hello, Old Radio Al here. Today I've got something a bit different for you. This is a radio that John, who's given us so many great restoration videos, spotted on my radio collection video and he asked that I do a video on this one. It's a lot of videos. It's a 1945-1946 Minerva Tropic Master. It's AM and shortwave. These were produced, uh, you know, like I said, in 1945, but you'll see them branded as 1946 models and later in a slightly different version as a 1947 model. They came out in the summer of 1945. They were intended to be sold in the South Pacific Theater to, to our troops. They were billed as morale receivers. The idea was, a, you know, a soldier, sailor, marine could buy one of these things and they could tune in music and news from home when they were back in the rear areas. As such, you know, they're made for tough conditions. You know, there's not much about these that you'd consider beautiful, I guess, but they were made for function, you know, in a steel casing. It weighs about 22 pounds. Uh, but they are considered portable. This one's seen some wear, you know, I'd li like to know its history. It came with a door that uh, closed over the front. And this one has lost its door somewhere along the line. You still see its hinges. Uh, they're, you know, like I said, they're made to be portable. There's a handle. And they're made to run on AC or DC, you know, like you'd find on a ship. You know, ships back then were all DC. They were made to run on as little as 90 volts, but you know I read that somewhere that if the voltage was higher than 120, they'd just uh, do what they had to do, and they'd string light bulbs in series with the radio, and when the dial light looked about right, they'd play the radio. I'll uh, slide this one out of the chassis, and we'll take a closer look. Just bear with me for a minute. got the screws out. The beauty of these radios is, you know, you can slide the whole chassis out. As you can see, there's a little rust on this one. The only thing that I have done so far is recap it. I have to address this rust. The radio looked like it was pretty much original except for the speaker transformer is obviously not supposed to be mounted there. So that was replaced somewhere along the line. Everything else looks like it was as it was in 1945, including underneath. Now you can see it's been recapped. They used like a bus wire. It's an all-metal chassis, and as you can see, they they floated the chassis because it's a hot chassis. They floated it to isolate it from the cabinet. Let me uh, set the camera down, put it back in, and we'll give it a listen. When I was uh, in the Navy back in the 70s, a lot of the equipment that we had was built exactly like this. It was easy, very easy to service. And that was the idea. Although these were not military pieces of equipment, they were built to be used in in those areas. All right, take a little closer look at it. As you can see, it says Minerva Tropic Master. The grill kind of has a stylized M. 
and nothing much you can say about it other than that it's you know on off volume tone band select it is AM and shortwave and tuning they were built to last this one certainly has a little bit of the history of these um, as I said they were intended for members of the service um, you know to boost morale but not many of these actually made it to the war um, in 1945 as you know um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki happened and that shortened the war quite a bit more than what was estimated you know they thought it was going to last at least another year if they had to invade the Japanese homeland so these were sold in uh, PX's and Navy exchanges then after the war they were gonna try it well they did they started uh, marketing them to civilians the problem was they were expensive uh, one of these cost you $75 new and according to my inflation calculator it comes out to about $946 today you know, that's a lot of money for something that you you know you wouldn't want in your parlor <laughs> and they're even back then there were cheaper alternatives for boat anchors to DX on so they just never took off and they were only sold until 1947 they did make one modification along the way uh, they changed the uh, the uh, audio output section tubes the tubes that they were using they found that if one tube went bad it would take the other tube with it so they they changed those but other than that they pretty much stayed the same so let's give it a listen side vents the back of this whoop, has a, uh, a sliding door so you can stick the cord and the antenna wire back inside and close it up along with the front door that's missing and lug the thing around where you needed to lug it not, not a bad sounding radio it's eight, eight tubes How I got this radio was pretty much dumb luck, and you can emphasize the dumb. Uh, there's a local antique mall that I visit mm, about once a week, I guess, and there are a couple of vendors that usually have an old radio or two, and, and there's a couple of vendors I get records from. And, you know, I just like antiques in general, so I go in there about once a week. It's on my way home from work. Anyway, this radio was sitting on a table in a booth that. Um, is almost exclusively hand tools you know old used hand tools and I bet I had literally walked by this radio at least 50 times and I'd seen it but I never really gave it a close look I thought it was an old battery charger or something to be honest you know well one day I was looking for a pair of 10 snips and I knew I'd seen them on that table and I figured I could get a pair cheap instead of going to the hardware store that's when I finally noticed, hey, that's a radio. 
So I jumped on Radio Museum's website and I found out just what it was. You know, I had no idea what I was looking at and I snapped it right up and brought it home. I think I paid $30 for it. You know, I was there for a long time, you know, probably a year. And it's just dumb luck someone else didn't buy it. But it's one that I really appreciate and, you know, they don't all have to look beautiful to, to be special and this one certainly doesn't. I, I probably will not do anything else to the case. I'll leave it as is. We'll address that rust and I need to replace the dial lamp. Uses a little bit different type bulb. I gotta find one. But there you have it. This is a Minerva Tropic Master. Built as 1946 model, uh, but built in 1945. I wish it could talk. I wish it could tell me where it's been. And thanks for watching. More later.